A big warm welcome to The Late Show with Stacey Copeland. Seven minutes past ten, it's Friday the 23rd of September and a big day for us here at BBC Radio Manchester because I've just come straight here from our Make a Difference Awards. I looked marginally smarter, but I've put my comfies on now. <laughs> Did my best, you know, to scrub up. But uh, wow, what an evening. I saw, you know, I was lucky enough to see the first four awards and then there was an interval, so I had to nip back across here, of course, for the programme. So I missed the next four, but I can tell you, those first four awards, just unbelievable. The fundraising category, volunteer category, carer, community group, just unbelievable. The work that people are doing. I mean... I've heard about it, you know, I've obviously we've, we've been playing, you know, each of the finalist stories on here and across the, the, the programmes and, it, you know, you get a feel for it and you can, you know, you can sort of hear in the voice the passion for what they're doing, but to meet them in per, per person and see their videos and speak to them about the work that they're doing, they are just absolutely incredible. The true heroes of our communities. Uh, and I think, you know, at one point Dave Scott got up and he was talking about his upload programme and they had, you know, one of his acts on who was fabulous, Aisha, who did a spoken word poem. We also had a BBC music introducing brand new artist as well, Rosie, who was just phenomenal. Rosie Charles, who played a song on her guitar. Wow, just incredible talent. But Dave Scott was saying, yeah, you know, Manchester's known for its sport and football and music and all of that, which is great. It really is. But it's the people, the amazing people across Greater Manchester that really make it what it is. And there were so many of them there tonight who've been through unbelievable adversity, really difficult times and just you know, used that, if you like, and channeled it to help other people and go above and beyond the extra mile to help others. So really humbling, very inspirational and a total privilege and honour to be there and, and hear their stories. So um, you'll be hearing all about that, of course, next week. Uh, but well done to every single nominee and finalist. It was just an incredible event. So really glad that I got to be there for, for a bit of that. Right between now and one, my special guest this evening is Alex Payne, Sky presenter. Um not here to talk about that though, he's here to talk about how influencers now, it's sort of changing, there's a bit of a momentum shift of rather being there to sort of push products and make profit, what can they impact in terms of social change? So he's doing a lot of work around that, so you can hear about that, pretty interesting topic um, as that, you know, things start to move in a different direction, socially certainly anyway. Um, we've got a brand new reverse hit after 11, in this hour we've got the pseudonym of course, tonight on The Social I'm joined by Autumn and Matt, it's first time Matt's going be with us so we'll give him a warm welcome and autumn of course has been with us a couple of times before we're going to start off by talking about Stu allen will be remembering an absolute icon for my generation huge for most of us anyway there might be the the odd one who wasn't really you know wasn't really into that kind of music but we all sort of went through that phase at some point and um, so i'm asking tonight who were the artists who most impacted influenced and affected you in those teenage years. Um, and we'll find out from Matt and Autumn uh, who influenced them. Right, Stacey's pseudonym this evening. <clears throat> You'd be glad to know, we've got text back tonight. We're back on with the text. Um, so the name, I'll give you their real name. You have to tell me their stage name. So who are they best known as? So like anime, but look, better known as Tina Turner. So Rita Maria Crudgington is the name. Rita Maria Crudgington. So tell us who it is and you can do that by text 81333 start your message with the word mank or by telephone 0800 218 really usual is right and jeff in harper hey tell you what i'd pick you on my team for like phone a friend millionaire every day of the week because you get all of them all the time paul in eccles as well good evening paul paul's got it right Thomas in Withinshaw. Thomas, you've been doing pretty well at this. Thomas's guest, Lisa Marie Presley. Oh, no! Oh, sorry, Thomas, that's not the right answer, but it's a cracking guess. Rita Maria Crudgington, who is that? Get in touch with us and let us know. It's time to say hello to Matt and Autumn, who are with us on the social this evening. Autumn, of course, who's been with us a few times now, haven't you? And Matt's first time, so welcome, Matt. Great to have you with us. Hello. Autumn, what have you been up to? I've been doing uh, my usual mushroom hunting, all for culinary purposes, of course. And um, it's not been a good 
It's not been a good year. We've not had enough rain, so some of the species haven't come up yet. And I'm still waiting to take photos of them. How do you know all about this then? Yeah, I'm Cause see, I didn't Right, because yeah. I just didn't go to science when I was a kid. Yeah, well, so there's big gaps in my knowledge about stuff. It was one of those that I went off and did other stuff, do you yeah. know? Yeah, and there's so many thousands and thousands of different species of mushrooms that we don't even know about yet. And we can just find some here that are growing that haven't been discovered. That's why I, I love it I so much. I probably wouldn't have missed that, though. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have taught any of that anyway, to be fair. Probably just missed a bit of photosynthesis and like pulleys or whatever they do yeah physics and friction and something like that, that yeah the my- mycelial networks and stuff like that you don't hear about that in school and it's kind of sad what got you into it um i think my cousin passed away and then i was in the forest a lot <clears> and i was just looking at mushrooms all of the time and i had to explain to my son what they were because he wanted to know and i didn't know so i learned and then i learned more and more and more and i just became fascinated at, at everything they could do and all the things that they've they travel and then how they affect all of our plants around us and our life around us. How do they air. travel? Um, they travel through like networks underground. So most of the mushroom is underground, and you're only seeing like the, the fruit on the top. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a massive, massive Tokyo underground network times a million. No way. Yeah, it's awesome. Who knew? Mushrooms know. got their own little network. It's crazy. It's fascinating, really, the stuff that gets people dead passionate because. Um, when I was at the TED event, I did, I did a TED talk a couple of years ago, and they, were, they, they get all the speakers to meet the night before. And there was someone who'd been in the FBI and was like a forensic expert. Uh, there was a few, but one woman I met was an insect expert. Ooh. I know, and I was like, how on earth do you get dead interested in insects? To, enough to do like a 20 minute full yeah. on lecture with everyone but if people are really passionate about something and they can convey it in the right way you can be interested in almost anything i think unless they're boring then even if they're talking about something dead exciting they're still boring aren't they to be fair but yeah yeah, it's just amazing how people you know one thing that someone else would be like oh no interest whatsoever others it's like the life's work. There's a famous guy named Paul Stamets, and he does that for mushrooms, and everybody just absolutely loves him. Oh, you're and proper d- groupie, oh, the mushroom yeah. expert. I am, I am, yes. definitely. Mushroom but expert. Is. Got That's, posters of him and I'm everything. I'm jealous of him. Mushroom man. Yeah. That's great. Anyway, Matt, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you. Thank Tell you us a little bit you. about you then. Um, well, what can I say? I'm 40 years old. Um, I met you only last week at a festival. Like minds doing like things and all that, enjoying the things. So you, if, if if people missed it on Wednesday, um, I spoke to quite a few people at the Made in Manchester Festival on Saturday. Um, we we spoke to Rob, who, who was the organizer. Um, we he also spoke a to a job. couple of he did he did a brilliant job. We spoke to a few of the people who were part of the Romley Community Forum, a couple of the staff that worked there. Uh, Matt was one of them. But Matt, you were telling me about uh, your passions and interests, uh, which involve dance and theatre. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, um, I started um, doing musical theatre when I was fourteen years old. I uh, started at school in Bugsy Malone and I got the main part off my first audition which was actually quite uh, surprising at the time should I say um, and at the same time my mum was in a hobby doing musical theatre for Romney Operatic Society and they needed a suit of armour and I was asked to come along and do it and I did and I had to stand in a place for 40 minutes under the burning lights and I <laughs> nearly fainted every night Take some week. doing to be fair that It did and uh, as I walked off I got a round of applause and it was like the biggest, best thing I've ever f- felt in my life. It was an inside feeling that I'm still trying to emulate again mm. just to get that first buzz back. And it's 26 years down the line. Um, I did start out doing maybe two shows a, a year. Um, then I started moving around to different societies. Have you, got, have you progressed now? Have you got speaking parts or um, <laughs> see, progressed from suit of armour? Mu- musical art, yeah, I've, I've progressed a little bit, but I don't really... Musical theatre is for singers. I'm not the voice of a singer as such, but... It's the whole aspects. It's the live performance. It's you've got to get it right on the night. You've got to learn. You've got to practice. You could do six months rehearsals, and then it's all for a week. And then obviously the audience appreciate what you've done. Um, but I've also been in Peaky Blinders and I've done a lot of TV productions and Agatha Witnesses, Ag- Agatha Christie's Witness of Prosecution, and Cold Feet and so- loads of other stuff. What's it like being in those? Is there loads a of waiting artist. about? Or? Oh, there's a lot of waiting mm. about. It's a lot of hurry. Up is it and fun wait. or? Is it, um, does it feel like a job? For me, it's a passion. So I might lose out on a day's wage as an electrician, but mm-hmm. I'm going doing something around people that want to be there. Mm. So there's a love for it more than a, a wage as such. Yeah, yeah. So that's what keeps driving me forward. One day, I mean, I've written a screenplay, I've written songs and I've written other stuff along the way, but my dream is to be James Bond. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I don't mm-hmm. think I've been to the right places. I, I, I did go college at first and I had to drop out and help my mum with 
like rent and stuff back in the day so it kind of put my dreams on a back burner a little bit but I'm still progressing in the ways that I know I can I've still got to keep a job down I've still got to earn wages I've still got to support the family but then my passion is still doing it when I can and it's great to have a passion isn't it I mean yeah, some yeah. people don't necessarily but I think to have passions hobbies interests is you know and more recently I've moved into TV electricians as well so I'm around them again and bigger actions yeah. and stuff like it's that it's funny how all those worlds yeah, can yeah, collide yeah. sometimes isn't it well uh, coming up we're going to be remembering Stu Allen um, you know obviously not, not everybody will have been into his music most people will have heard of him some people won't but certainly for my generation was absolutely iconic so we're going to be talking about Stu Allen and remembering him but also discussing who were the artists who impacted and influenced you most through those formative teenage years also we've got Stacey's pseudonym tonight it's Rita Maria Crudgington tell me what is that person's stage name who are they better known as Rita Maria Crudgington if you think you know 81333 is the number to text start your message with the word bank or you can call us on 0800 218 well done to Will in Bolton Jeff in Arpare Malk in Swinton hi Malk Paul in Eccles and uh, a good effort by Thomas in, in with Ensure you guessed Lisa Marie Presley. Not the right answer, but you can have another go at it if you want. Sunday mornings on BBC Radio Manchester. That's also incorrect, I'm afraid. But give it another go. Give it another go. Um, should I give you a clue? No, I won't at this point. It's too early. It's too early. Give it another bash, though, if you want. If you want to, it's 81333. If you want to text, start your message with the word mank, and you can call 0800 218 if for some strange reason you'd rather speak to Jason. Who would? Right, we've got Matt and Autumn with us on the social and we're remembering uh, Stu Allen, the Manchester music legend and DJ who sadly died yesterday after a battle with cancer. He was a producer and dance DJ. He was a huge favourite on the 1990s rave scene and worked for Piccadilly Radio and Key 103 here in Manchester in the 80s and 90s. He truly was an iconic figure for, for my generation and I think... Uh, not everybody, but some kids of a certain nature will remember <laughs> um, getting a tape cassette recorder on a Sunday night, taping his Sunday show, and then the rest of the week it would be absolutely pounding out of either your mate's car or your mate's bedroom window or your headphones or wherever, and you'd just be bobbing your head along fury. It was like hardcore rave music, or um, do you know that kind of like? Yeah. Doof, doof, doof. Yeah. So you just sit there with your mates, like nodding away, <laughs> three hundred million just beats that. per minute. It was great. Lyrics at right times as well. well absolutely, yeah. but yeah. you're not singing them. <laughs> you're just <laughs> nodding along like three million beats a minute. Um, so yeah, it was it was really influential. So um, I, I know Autumn, you mentioned obviously you know obviously weren't yeah. you were born here from America, so you're not familiar with him. Uh, but Matt, you are. What are your memories of Stu Allen growing up? So I, I was only. In maybe 10, 12 in the early 90s um, but it was definitely me coming of age listening to his music and picking up on me my friends around me listening to it and stuff like that and there was one time we'd, we'd go to um, we'd, we'd camp out every now and then a few of our mates as we're growing older 16, 17, 18 have a few drinks and a few bits and bobs and get a boombox on the go and then we'd just be settled, settled for the night, just absolutely rocking out to Stu Allen and his crazy tunes that he might put I just on. feel like it was a phase that loads like, loads of us went through. And there'd be a bit in the, in, in, in the middle of them, usually autumn, that, that'd say, Stu Allen, and everyone used yeah, to sing yeah. that wow. bit. Was... I've got one for you, when the, while the record spins and stuff like yeah, that, because yeah. that's where it comes from. And yeah. uh, Free Your Soul, that yeah, was, that was it mentioned quite a lot, actually. Absolutely massive. But it actually got me dancing as well. So I, I am a dancer now, and I've been dancing since 26 years. I felt the rhythm then. I mm. felt the beat. I felt the eight, the sixteen, the thirty-two because it can be that quick yeah. in his music. Rapid. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And that's where I kept kept me counting from from me dancing. Yeah. The bass line, the the sub lines, the the hook lines. You can keep sorts, up with that. You know I mean? yeah, yeah, Allen, yeah, you can keep up with yeah, almost anything. Yeah. So autumn for you then. Who are the artists who influenced and shaped your youth? Would you say? I think the biggest ones for me would be the Beastie Boys. Um, ah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I think I I turned Buddhism into like a Buddhist for a while because of Adam Yauch um, and he's his free Tibet concerts and things like that so when I was growing up I was always following that band around everywhere they went I was at a Beastie Boys concert and then I would um, try to raise money for their Milarepa fund for freeing Tibet and all of that stuff what was so. it about them that really spoke to you do you think at that age I think for me it was it was the music and the samples they used and the fact that that when people listened to their music they could go and try to find those samples so they would actually introduce themselves to other artists and so they played 
a lot of reference to uh, black history and black artists too. So they were promoting those artists actually in their music all of the time and giving them credits for it. Um, I think Paul's Boutique was one of those that used just massive amounts of samples of different different tunes. And So for you, it obviously went beyond music, yeah. didn't it? Because there's, there's some bands or artists where you can... You can enjoy the music and that's it. You don't really connect to them beyond that. You just go, oh, I like their stuff. Yeah. And then there's others who you connect with on a different level. You relate to them. The, it's the soundtrack of your experiences and it's a whole different experience of, of the soul with that kind of music, isn't it? Yeah, and I definitely felt that. I mean, I was such a, a giant, <clears throat> giant fan and I still am. And it's just the fact that you can even now just hear a song on the radio and then hear, I've never, I've heard that song before. It was in a Beastie Boys tune. Ah. So, you know. And when you hear, you know, one of those from, from that time, yeah. particularly being a teenager, it just instantly take you back. Instantly, amazingly takes mm. me back. And it was like the grunge in the 90s and all of that yeah. stuff. They, they did kind of went to everywhere with their music, they did instrumentals and just spanned different genres. So I really Well, that is that. a very cool choice, or would have expected any <laughs> less from mm-hmm. you. Uh, what about you then, Matt, with the, the ones who really shaped you in your youth? Well, actually, it's my mum's choice of music. My first record I ever put on was Way Hey, Wait a Minute, Mr. Postman on the LP record. Um, and it was I was trying to mix it. I was trying to scratch <laughs> my mum's records back in the day. But the first, she was really pleased oh, about yeah. that. But the first album I bought was uh, Dre 2001. Right. And they had that kind of upbringing, and that was my where I'd put my money into. But I'd also bought a Robbie Williams adver- mm. album, and I'd bought, um, you know, Oasis, and I'd bought, like, a, a rash genre of music. I'm, I'm not defined to one kind of music. Mm. I like things that have bold lyrics and catchy bass lines and stuff that, like, takes you on a journey and stuff. So all of them can do that for me. It is, like you say, the setting that you're at. I was an air cadet for 10 years and I've gone annual camps. Uh, one music that we had was, we had a VHS and it was a Now 16 video <laughs> or something like that, but it had Fuji's on it. Oh, and it yeah, became the great. song of the summer yeah. for everyone that was <clears throat> yeah. on that camp, for every camp that came for receding weeks. It's amazing though, when you, you, you can not hear it for like 20 years and it oh, takes but you, it just takes right you back, back right yeah. then, yeah. My first ever two vinyls that I bought, I bought them both together, was uh, Billy Joel, River of Dreams, okay. and Two Unlimited, No Limit. Yeah, <laughs> just can't be any more different. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, in Hyde Mal, that used to, they used to have a record shop upstairs, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, I used to go with pocket money every week and buy a record of, of someone I'd never heard of the on the front. Shop, and, and the, yeah, and I yeah, could yeah. Take, no, no, the other one above, oh, uh, right, yeah. I think there's a quality save under it now. It got condemned, right. so it's not there anymore. But he'd had the record shop about 30 years, and he used to go every week and just get a record of someone I'd never heard, and he's dead excited bringing it home and listening to it yeah, and yeah. sometimes they didn't sound anything like they looked on the front cover and stuff it was it was great but certainly mine would be oasis for those teenage yeah. years it just every single lyric it felt like they were talking to us like as yeah. teenagers oh, and totally they're related they're to my go-to karaoke's as well because we all want to be liam don't we and no <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, thank you for sharing those with us. Uh, Matt and Autumn with us on The Social. We're asking you for Stacey's pseudonym answer this evening as well. So, the name is Rita Maria Crudgington. Who are they better known as? What was their stage name? Uh, Will in Bolton's got it right. Jeff in Harper Hay, Malcolm in Swinton, Paul in Eccles and Jeanette in Lytham. Hi, Jeanette. Good evening to you. Uh, Bev in Upper Mill, unfortunately, didn't get the right answer, nor did Thomas in Withinshaw. Um, Maggie in Staley Bridge has guest Rita Coolidge oh no that's not right either I'm afraid but good guess and hello Maggie and uh, Staley Bridge that's my neck of the woods that's where I live haven't we got a lovely little town we certainly have right coming up we're talking about mank announcers and I'll tell you why it's to do with the B network and a certain Liam Gallagher Buses was asked whether bus announcements would be made in a mank accent, and uh, he joked that they should get Liam Gallagher to do it. Of course, very famous Mancunian with a very strong Mancunian accent. Um, so, how do you two feel about that? Would you would you like to hear announcements in mank? I'd like to <clears> maybe <throat> make it regional as well. So, if you've got maybe someone well known in an area, they can do them local areas as well. But there's a few options that I'd go for. Uh, I've got a pseudonym for you, by the way. What's Bugsy Malone's real name? 
Don't know. Um, Aaron Davis, and he's like a local Manchester lad. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was thinking maybe you could use local people. Oh, from you local mean areas. the rapper? I, yeah, thought, yeah. I was thinking you were meaning no, like from the old film for yeah, a minute. No, no, that that's was me. how old I am. <laughs> that was me for 26 yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, I'm older than this new <laughs> rapper stuff. I, I go back in time, me, no point asking me about new stuff. I mean, my brain will go back years ago. Anyway, so do you want a Mancunian announcer? I think, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it would be good. Autumn, what do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't hear the accents anymore, so it's all fine for me. I just don't hear them. Like, do you mean they're like, all the same? All the same, yeah. Because nah. like I hear Americans. But when you go to stuff. like Liverpool or London or something, you must. No, I don't know. No, what's they're happened. well different. No, I know they are really. If different. I hear like a strong New Jersey accent, I know it's different. It's like I think, Tennessee. I think further up north, I, those I mm. can I can definitely hear the difference there. But they kind of all blend together here for me. So what do you reckon about having? you know, a Mancunian accent on doing the announcing on the buses or any form of transport Perfect. for that matter. Carl Pil- Pilkinson from Sale, he'd do well on it. I was thinking, like, <laughs> where, who who would you pick if you could have it on, you know, your sat-nav, if you could mm-hmm. have it on, you know, everywhere, really. Yeah. You know, every, everywhere you, you, you sort of go where they do formal announcements. Yeah. Who, who would you pick? Would, who, whose voice would you like to hear? I would like to hear a woman's voice and I think I'd like to hear Sophie Willens. She does yeah. Alma's Not Normal and she's got this, like, it sounds it's like a good mate of mine, singing. Sophie, actually. Me too. Yeah, she's ace. So, I, I absolutely adore her, <clears> so I'd love to hear her voice all the time. Yeah. yeah. And she wouldn't be able to do it without being funny. I know. I think that would just, just be just funny. That's my choice for Carl Pilkinson mm. as well. He's just got a twin <laughs> to his funny. voice, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So think, is that who you'd pick then? Yeah, I, I think if people went for the Gallaghers, they wouldn't, people coming into the area, if it was like localised to the, you know, sat nav, mm. I don't think people would necessarily understand the strong Mancunian accent. That's Only true, Mancunians yeah. might understand it. Yeah. To, to the fine tea, at least. Yeah, I suppose so. Because some, I used to have it when... Um, when I was playing football over in America, I remember one day uh, one of my mates saying, what's that thing you say when, when like you see people? I was like, what are you on about? And she went, it's like, no, no. She was like, it's like, ah. And I was like, no, I don't, definitely don't say anything <laughs> like that. She was trying to do it and I was like, don't say anything that sounds like that. Right. Anyway, we were walking around together um, around Greenwood where, where, we, where we were. And I walked past them and I go, are you all right? And she went, that, that thing, that's that it. thing. You're all right. Yeah, and I was it. like, ah, is that what you mean? And she said, yeah, what what are you saying? And I said, I'm saying, hiya, are you all right? But like just in one <laughs> one long thing. And she was like, all right. Um, and so it's stuff like that, I suppose, that to us, you know what they're saying. But if you're not from here, you'll have There's that like, new one that the kids it? are doing local, isn't they? Where they say, hi, yeah. But it's in like a high pitch voice and it goes away like, hi, yeah. Yeah, but I know. They're it's all doing that at the funny moment. how there's different things That's in from different YouTube. generations. Is it? Is that yeah, from? It's yeah, my son does that. It's from YouTube. It's funny, <laughs> isn't it, though, how different generations have like their own like language and Twinging. slang and, yeah, yeah. and all, yeah. all that stuff. But I think it'd be great to have those. It, I, you know, I think that um, when we have regional anything like you know news, weather, all of that, you know, it should be why not? Well, you're local to this from. station, so it makes sense that you're voice fits doesn't it so yeah I mean it, it's I, I th- feel the same you know if I was in Liverpool I'd I'd expect to hear yeah, Liv- yeah, Liverpoolian exactly, yeah. you know yeah. speaking in their accent I suppose so but it, I think there's still a bit of a sig- stigma with some accents aren't there depending on where you're from and the way you speak I think there can be a bit of a stigma with it for certain things and, and some, also- sometimes in form of northern accents mm-hmm. it's kind of you put in either comedy box you're allowed to do comedy you're allowed to do sort of niche things like gardening whatever i don't know expertise things but really formal stuff like you know the proper news or in some cases you know the weather on it's national told, telly yeah, yeah. it's not it's not quite as it's a voice you don't than tend to, yeah, yeah you don't tend to get the regional accents as well i was just thinking like bus stations and train stations they could be like a local normal voice and stuff and then when it comes to the sat nav you might get the funny side of it there as well so it's got to be a bit more stricter when it comes to your open areas i presume i'd much rather have individualized i'd much rather the sat nav spoke like we do giving directions yeah yeah so instead of saying in 40 yards turn left nobody knows how far 40 yards is unless you've unless, <laughs> left, no. unless you've played football <laughs> then you can kind of gauge it because you know how long a football pitch is you know the 12 yard box you know you know what i mean whatever yeah, yeah. um then you can go oh yeah uh, sorry six yard box you, you can go right i can gauge it off that 12 yards penalty spot whatever um but i think it'd be well better if it was like we would say it right you go up there and then there's this <laughs> pub called whatever and then just after <laughs> yeah, the pub yeah, yeah. there's like this weird little thing in the ground and you'll see this thing written on the wall you turn left there <laughs> it'd That's be well better if it was dead specific Specific. If they've used words like ginnel, though, that might confuse a few people. Yeah, yeah. They don't. You don't What's hear that much. 
Yeah. <laughs> you don't get that much these days, do you, Ginnell? No. These alleyway, I suppose, people use, don't they, whatever. But you don't get Ginnell very often these days. Yeah. Good words. You should have a look at all these. <laughs> Sometimes they come out, don't they, in these articles, like all the words that haven't been used or whatever. But anyway, question of the week is coming up next. Stacey's pseudonym, though, is Rita Maria Crudgington. If you think you know who that is, 81333 is the number to text. Start your message with the word mank. Or you can call 0800 218 and I'll give you the answer shortly. After this, this is an absolute. League two reports as they look. Crack at this, I'll give you the answer in a moment or two. It's Rita Maria Crudgington, if you think you know who it is. 81333 is the number to text. Start your message with the word mank. Or you can call us on 0800 218 Time for question of the week now, though. We've got Matt and Autumn with us uh, on the social. And this is based on um, usually things that I've been up to. And on Tuesday morning, I went up uh, Mam Tor for sunrise, which was just... Amazing, absolutely stunning. Uh, it wasn't that cold, really. And uh, went up there, obviously, enjoyed the sunset, standing above the clouds, just mega, absolutely mega. So I was wondering what are the best sunrises or sunsets that you've ever seen? Autumn, I know you love nature and being outdoors. You've got yes. to have seen some belters. Quite a few. And I think I just love those California sunsets because mm. on the beach, they're just they're mm. just everything they're, they are in the movies times you know all of the pink and the orange and the purples i've seen one of them <clears throat> when um because we i was in austin yeah played football in austin in texas but we when we got through to the nationals we played a team in california and we went the night before the game we went on the beach you know just sort of i don't know sort of stretching our legs i guess from the, the flight and what have you and it was just absolutely yeah. phenomenal that sunset it really was yeah i don't know what it is about the ones in places like america where there's just that vast oh we talked about this the other night just that vast space that you don't really get in places like england because there's something built everywhere it seems yeah. but you, they just seem massive there they do seem massive and i think one of the the things is the color they say comes from possibly pollution so i know california someone else said that the other yeah. night yeah so that california has those sunsets because of all the pollution but um i'd say prestwich also has quite a few beautiful gorgeous sunsets that i've seen this year and there was can't one can't just be pollution can it no it's gotta, be, like, it's gotta love. be atmosphere and and <laughs> bit of love else. rising up or something it's gotta be something better than that surely there's, there's quite a few around so have you got a favorite place then to watch a sunrise or a sunset uh my favourite place to watch a sunrise or a sunset would be the top of a mountain, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like the Mount Fuji um, when I lived in Japan and things like that. You Have just, you been up Mount Fuji? Yeah, yeah. It's just I cool. really want to do that, mate. Yeah. What was just, it like? Could you, did you do it in... Did you do the, the difficult route or the... I did the easy one, but well, it wasn't say easy. easy. I'm sure it, it wasn't easy. It still hurts your feet. Did you lot. do it where you sort of reached the summit for sunrise, or did you? Yeah, right, you reached you the did. summit for for sunrise, and so just imagining what the sunset would be from a place like that would be wow, would be the, almost similar. But um, yeah, just going down wasn't as fun. No, <laughs> no, it's never the, the descent's harder on your knees. It is, especially on my crumpet knees. It just feels funny. If I ever do it, I might roll down. <laughs> right, but, but get, I, I used to be, I used to be really good at going down the stairs in a sleeping bag with my sister. So I might, <laughs> might just have to whip that one out the locker. I don't know. Got that in my armor if I need it. We're definitely going to talk more about that <laughs> off air anyway because I need to know about your Mount Fuji experience. Uh, Matt, what about you? Them favourite sunrises and sunsets? Well, uh, there's a few, obviously the vistas and the, 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 the views and everything. Uh, I go back to when I first went to Zanzi and I lived there for six months. That was an amazing one. Oh, uh, I bet they had some. My crackers first lads' there. holiday in Crete. That was another amazing one. Mm. But the best one ever was my wedding day the morning after. I'd done a whole session. I was in Bredbury Hall. I got right through to half past six in the morning. I'd had an amazing day with my amazing wife, amazing family. And then this sun just came over Bredbury Hall. Wow. And I was like, that's the start of the rest of my life. So oh, it's that's emotional lovely, that. link. Yeah, you know of course. I mean? Yeah, it's dead meaningful so, as well. I mean, the views are beautiful. Peak District, Lake District. Yeah. Light yeah. aircraft, annual camps. I've got yeah. them all. I can go through a million of them. Mm -hmm. But emotionally, that one pulled that me one, back It's to nice that to one. have one that properly yeah, yeah. stands out in your mind yeah. because of what was happening at the time as well. That's, that's dead special. Got as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bell to that. Okay. That's a really, really good one. And uh, speaking of things that. Uh, pull on the heartstrings we've had our uh, make a difference awards this evening which we've you know we've been to prior to coming here it was just amazing and you will hear all the stories of the finalists and the nominees next week it was just very very 
humbling, inspirational, overwhelming, just amazing. And some of the things that people have overcome that they've done for others, just some phenomenal people from across uh, our region. Um, so given that it's, you know, it's tonight and the, these awards have been handed out, I wanted to sort of see, you know, who the people are in, in your lives or communities um, who have made a difference uh, and, you know, to, to celebrate them. So um, Autumn. Do you want to share yours with us? Sure. I have a neighbor, Joanne, and she works for the Prestwich Street Kitchen. So she feeds people every week um, underneath the tram stop in Prestwich. So people who are in need of food and she's making the meals herself. And her upstairs bedroom is full of the food and the donations that come in. <laughs> oh, wow. And so like her whole her whole house is basically surrounded by this volunteer it work always gets out doing. of hand that stuff doesn't it, it? Does. <laughs> it's like you, you start to think oh I'll donate a bit of this or I'll do a bit of that because I remember when I went to the refugee camps um, and we said oh we'll get a van and like you know just a little van will take stuff and honestly my front room it was about I'm not even kidding probably two foot deep yeah. it was up, up, like up to my waist and I thought what am I going to do? We had yeah. to get loads of friends to come and help load this transit van. It was packed to the rafters, but it's always worth it. Yeah. So Joanne, well done for the work that Joanne's doing. She she can have um, a little difference maker celebration applause there. Uh, Matt, who who have you picked? Um, it goes back to my air cadet days, and he's a call, guy called John Schofield. Um, he's dedicated almost 40, 50 years of his life to let other people learn the skills of being a cadet. Um, from polishing your shoes to drill and all the rest of it. It's an unpaid job and he does it twice a week, most weekends through the year. And he's just dedicated to the cause and he's a really, really nice man and he gives you the father feeling and he gives you that arm around your shoulder when you need it. And he'll tell you off as well when he needs to do that, but he's just dedicated to helping people no matter who you are, where you're from, what your background is. And he's always there for you if you ever need to call him, basically. That's a great shout. There is another one. <clears throat> it's amazing when you think about the amount of hours and energy and love that people put into these things, don't they? And often mm-hmm. they don't get recognised. That was what was so obvious tonight, is that none of them felt like, why me? Why-